The following is the conclusion to our investigations into Skinwalker Ranch. If you haven't yet, please watch our previous episodes to catch up. A link to those episodes is in the description below. There's a part of this story that I haven't told yet because I couldn't figure out how to tell it. But as I set up my tent on Skinwalker Ranch, I thought about something I'd seen and heard earlier that day. Something that changed my perception of the land I was walking on. This right here is the end of Skinwalker Ranch. This is the, the perimeter, right? Correct. Correct. This is this is owned by the Ute or a tribe. So right here is Native American land. Look, there's a bone right there. Yep. This this is fascinating to me because I knew the local tribes were near proximity. Skinwalker, you are literally mm -hmm. touching. I've seen the, the black and white photos of what look like skins. They're bladders. Animal bladders. Yeah. When I acquired the property in 2016, they were hanging on the fence line. And I asked the security, you know, what are these? What is this about? This is kind of gross. And he said that uh, the neighboring tribe had placed these on the fence line in order to keep the demonic shape shifting entities on this property and off of theirs that it would ward off the skinwalker. the skinwalker. When the Mormon pioneers entered Utah in the 1800s, they encountered the Ute Native Americans, indigenous tribes that had lived there for centuries. As the Mormons began building towns and cities, brutal and bloody wars were fought to control the land. For decades, the Utes battled to defend the home of their ancestors. The consequences were devastating. A microcosm of a national genocide, the Ute population suffered and dwindled from disease and war. Defeated and often at gunpoint, they were placed inside America's second largest Indian reservation, the Uinta and Ore. As I went down in the river to pray Studying about that good old way And who should wear the robe and crown Good Lord, show me the way Oh sinners, let's go down Let's go down, come on down As the sun went down over Skinwalker Ranch, I thought about these people and their ghosts that some say haunt this land. I am setting up my tent in front of Homestead 2 here on Skinwalker Ranch, which according to the scientists and people who work here is one of the most, as you would say, haunted places on the ranch. A lot of activity has been recorded happening here, so naturally I'm gonna spend the night here. For my night on the ranch, I set up a motion detecting night vision trail camera to monitor my campsite the entire night. Also, I had a military grade night vision monocular lent to me by the Skinwalker investigators. And I had my video camera with consumer grade night vision. After my cameraman left, I was alone on the ranch for the rest of the night. Another piece of equipment I was told to bring is a lightning strike detector. Electrical interference, this thing will glow and beep an alarm. Once set up, the first thing I did was, obviously... Right now I'm heading to the field where the dino beaver uh, apparently appeared. I went to look for a dino beaver, 
a half dinosaur, half beaver monster that previous Skinwalker investigators claimed came out of the field just south of Homestead 2. So south of Homestead 2, right here. But the dino beaver field was empty. I saw zero dino beavers. Maybe dino beavers only come out after midnight. I crossed a small stream and headed up to the abandoned carriage house. This is where Fugel and his team captured video of two glowing objects in the middle of the day. They had previously shown me this video, so I figured I'd check it out. So right up here is where they saw that thing on the video. Right up in here, in this area, in this area here. So I don't see anything uh, that, that would explain those two objects that were in here. Now, there's this chair and a human body size freezer <laughs> for some reason. And claw marks. <laughs> those aren't claw marks. And I bet it's locked. Oh, shit, it's not. Oh, okay. Just electrical stuff. Okay, whew, I'm just I'm really glad. I don't know what I expected, to be honest with you. Walking back to the main road, I heard a noise. Okay, I legit, legitimately heard something up down that way, down this road. Let me get my big flashlight out. I was, what, I was crossing the road here. I heard like a thump, a little tap in that direction. And I couldn't help but notice multiple glowing objects right in front of my camera that were similar to other objects previously seen on the ranch. Now I'd hate to bug you, but I'm looking for someone to help me analyze this footage. Preferably someone really good at science and mathematics. Skinwalker Ranch was not the first time Brandon Fugel invested his money into paranormal slash religious investigations. In 2004, he founded the Ancient Historical Research Foundation, or AHRF, a group of Mormons who went on Indiana Jones-type quests in North and South America, looking for physical evidence of the religious stories in the Bible and Joseph Smith's Book of Mormon. The Book of Mormon claims Native Americans are actually ancient Israelites who sailed to America and that God cursed them with darker skin for their wickedness. In educational images used by the Mormon Church, the faithful followers of Christ are shown with lighter skin and the wicked, evil dissenters are shown with darker skin. The AHRF sought out physical evidence of these ancient Book of Mormon civilizations. In presentations at Mormon-owned Brigham Young University, the foundation presented a hunt for religious stones, ancient treasure, and the skeletal remains of biblical giant mummies. Giant mummies. A list of their projects showed they were not only seeking evidence to prove the Book of Mormon true, but were also looking for evidence of Bigfoot and UFOs. Fugel says he left the AHRF in 2005, just one year after founding it. But the organization's website listed him as director as recently as 2020. Fugel says this error is due to the AHRF website not being updated because the person in charge of updating the website had been sick and eventually died. Fugel's biography on a 2017 SEC document lists him as a current board member of AHRF that year. And his own biography on the website of his current company Colliers International listed him as being involved with AHRF as recently as 2022. Regarding this factual contradiction, Fugel says, I contributed nothing to AHRF after 2005. After the sun set, clouds blocked out the moon and stars, and the ranch was pitch black. I broke out the night vision monocular and was amazed at what I saw. 
I could see right through the clouds, and I saw every star in the sky. And it's at this point that I saw multiple unidentified objects. Uh, the, yep, there goes another one. It's crazy, this has been going on though for now maybe four minutes. I've seen at least six objects. You know what a satellite looks like up in the sky when it goes by? Like imagine that a little brighter and just like tons of them in a row. Since the monocular was not a camera, I tried my best to hold my camera up to it, but I couldn't see what it was seeing. Luckily, I did capture one of the objects. I saw eight to 10 of these one at a time, flying in the same place over the course of four to five minutes. I later went to inthesky.org, put in the exact location and time of my sighting, and was able to determine that what I was seeing was simply a line of Starlink satellites. So, a simple explanation. But I can see how someone at Skinwalker Ranch, maybe alone, at night, could look up and think they were seeing something strange. Eric, Eric, was that you? Around this time, I got a call on the radio from Eric Bard and Thomas Winterton. They said a surveillance camera on top of the Rocky Mesa was capturing the audio of someone or something screaming. So Steven, the camera that was picking up the voices is actually up on top of the mesa, facing the west hill. Right now, they just said someone out here was screaming Eric's name, uh, Eric, Eric, at a camera. And he heard his name, Eric? Yeah, he heard it three times. Uh, and it did sound like it was uh, yelling. So if it wasn't you, then it was somebody else. That's a negative on me. I was not yelling at all, and I didn't say his name. Copy that. That's weird. I've been out here. I haven't heard any yelling. That someone was on top of the mesa, screaming Eric's name over and over, was a bit disturbing. So I took advantage of this creepy moment to go inside the most haunted place on the ranch, Homestead 2. In 2018, Brandon Fugel says a staffer on the Senate Armed Services Committee called him and asked if he'd come to Washington, D.C. to brief committee members on Skinwalker Ranch. Who called you? Someone from Senator McCain's office. Did they call on behalf of Senator McCain? I'm calling on behalf of the senator who is interested. Is that accurate? You're nodding yes. Okay. At the time, Senator McCain was the head of the Senate Armed Services Committee, and the staffer that called Fugel was Thomas Kurt McConnell, who worked and works on the committee staff. McConnell did not return multiple requests from me for comment. The Senate committee, however, did. But we'll get to that in a moment. Fugel says he prepared this PowerPoint presentation on Skinwalker Ranch, and then flew to DC for the briefing. We go through metal detectors, we're led into it, we're meeting in a certain building in Washington, D.C., and we go into this huge briefing room. He shows me photos taken during the briefing. He wouldn't allow me to capture these photos on camera. In the photos, I saw men in suits that I didn't recognize, but some other faces were familiar. Hal Putoff, who was involved with Skinwalker Ranch since 1996, when Robert Bigelow first bought the ranch, and who later played a pivotal role in selling the ranch to Fugel, was there. And also, I think that's Brendan McKernan. Oh yeah, that's, yeah, he was one of them. That's Brendan McKernan. Brennan McKernan is a naval intelligence officer who many people don't know about because publicly, he's mostly kept a low profile. A rare photo of him is seen here in a Naval Public Affairs publication. According to a former Pentagon official, McKernan has been involved with hunting UFOs since at least 2015. 
Former Pentagon official Lou Elizondo filed a complaint with the Department of Defense Inspector General's office after the Pentagon denied he was the director of an official Pentagon UFO program. In the complaint, which we previously reported on, Elizondo claims he ran this UFO program until 2017 and that McKernan was part of his team. McKernan would go on to become the director of the Pentagon's official UFO task force, which was created in August 2020. Here's the interesting thing. As we commenced the presentation, I was interrupted by the gentleman at the head of the table, and he said, wait, before we proceed any further, I want to establish an understanding. All the gentlemen here, Mr. Fugel, that you're presenting to, are all very well aware of the reality of UFO phenomena. So please dispense with any part of your presentation that would seek to convince us of the reality, because we already know. Who said that? Uh, one of the individuals okay. leading the discussion. A source familiar with this briefing told me that this was Sean Kirkpatrick. Kirkpatrick is the director of the Pentagon's current UFO office called the All Domain Anomaly Resolution Office, or ARO. Hi, this is Steve Greenshoot with the New York Post. I'm following up on an email. I reached out to the Senate Armed Services Committee to confirm and ask about this 2018 meeting with Fugel. And I immediately got the runaround. So I sent an email already three days ago, four days ago now, I guess. Um, and I, I just haven't heard anything. For weeks, I called, emailed, called some more. Last time I called, uh, you guys said he was calling me, you know, when he had a moment. And that was, you know, a couple days ago. I got the feeling that someone didn't want to talk about this. And they were hoping I'd simply go away. But I didn't. I was curious if you could give me a timeline on when I might get a response. Oh my God. I have spent weeks that have turned into months just to get answers to basic questions. Did this happen? Who was there? Why did it happen? Finally, after two months, I finally got a response. A committee spokesperson states, in 2018, Mr. Fugel updated a handful of Senate staffers on plans for his properties. No senators were involved and no subsequent briefings were held. This makes no sense. First of all, I saw photos of this briefing. So they're saying it was just a hand, oh, it was just a handful of Senate staffers. It, no, Department of Defense officials were there. Also, they say staffers on the Senate Armed Services Committee fly a Utah real estate mogul to DC to brief them on plans for his real estate properties. <laughs> that makes zero sense. Fugel says this briefing was all about Skinwalker. The sole purpose was about Skinwalker Ranch. I emailed the spokesperson these follow-up questions to no response. I called and emailed some more again to no response if this was like about a scandal some you know whether it be a sexual scandal or some kind of embezzlement or fraud or just something massive i could understand the runaround and avoiding me and stuff like that but it's about a spooky haunted ranch <laughs> Behind the scenes, a former government official told me that in the government, there are many fans of UFOs in Skinwalker Ranch. Fans who unofficially and out of personal interest seek out the paranormal, often during the workday on the taxpayer's dime. I reached out multiple times to the Department of Defense for comment on all of this. They did not respond. I entered Homestead 2, and within minutes, heard several noises. What was that? I heard a thump over here. So this is creepy. Did you hear that? Right here. So over there, I heard a thump. 
and I just heard it again. I swear to God, I keep hearing it. What? So I've heard like four low thumps, one high thump. Who knows? I mean, everything moves in this building because it's like falling apart. Did you hear that? I hope the camera captured that. That was a loud one. I attributed the thumps to maybe the dilapidated structure moving as I walked around. Or maybe an animal. Walking outside of the building, something flew right past me. Whoa. Holy crap, what was that? It was just a blur. No sound. Flew right up into here. I thought maybe it was a bat, but I couldn't tell. Entering the next building, I found a bat. Jesus Christ, that's a bat. So it was a bat I saw. Before moving on, I noticed a crawl space under the homestead. I'm not getting in there, dude. And it's not because of spooky stuff, it's because of rattlesnakes. I turned on my night vision to peek inside. Ah, uh, sorry. That was fake. I just felt like you deserved at least one good scare. In a 2012 National Geographic video, this future Skinwalker Ranch investigator listed his scientific qualifications to include alien invasions. I'm a subject matter expert in space defense, asymmetric warfare, rocket science, and alien invasions. This is Travis Taylor. He doesn't like me very much, and he was not present when I visited Skinwalker Ranch. But he's arguably the star of the secret of Skinwalker Ranch on the History Channel. So let's get to know him. There is something glowing in the sky. Let's go talk to it. Taylor has multiple science degrees from multiple universities. His two PhDs are in optical science and aerospace engineering. Throughout his career, he's worked on various programs for the Department of Defense, including the U.S. Army's Space and Missile Defense Command. He's also an avid storyteller, the author of 19 science fiction books with titles like One Day on Mars, Human by Choice, and Bringers of Hell. And for the last 13 years, he's appeared on multiple TV shows. He starred in Rocket City Rednecks, a reality show where self-described rednecks do various science experiments. In one episode, they build a rocket powered by moonshine. More recently, Taylor is known for his appearance in almost 40 episodes of Ancient Aliens, a show which promotes the pseudoscientific idea that humans were created by aliens, or descended from aliens, or something like that. Taylor says he's been an expert on the ancient aliens theory since he was 10 years old. A small sample of Taylor's other paranormal claims include a personal encounter with a Native American ghost. A native walked into my bedroom, an old, a really old native. Who he says touched him and cut his face. So when I looked in the mirror, I was bleeding from that spot. And also a story about how the Skinwalker Poltergeist decapitated one of his chickens. I had like an electromagnetic attack on my chicken house and decapitated a chicken. Back in 2019, while filming season one of The Secret of Skinwalker Ranch, Taylor says he went to the Pentagon to brief some curious officials about what he was seeing on the ranch. And it was there, he says, that he met Jay Stratton for the first time. This is Jay Stratton. He was a naval intelligence officer who, over the course of 30 years, held many positions in the Department of Defense. Many don't know his name because he's only just recently retired and made his first public appearances. But while in the government, Stratton was involved with UFOs in Skinwalker Ranch for at least 15 years. Back in 2007, Stratton says he read the book Hunt for the Skinwalker along with his co-worker James Lukatsky at the Defense Intelligence Agency. Our previous report debunks many aspects of this book, 
which contains many spooky stories, but provides no evidence at all to back up any of its claims. Despite this, both Stratton and Lekatsky were fascinated by the book and its stories of UFOs, ghosts, and monsters. Lekatsky lobbied Senator Harry Reid to acquire $22 million to study UFOs in Skinwalker Ranch. Lekatsky was the director of this study, a program called OSAP, and Stratton was a lead investigator. In Lekatsky's self-published book about OSAP, he refers to Stratton with a pseudonym, Jonathan Axelrod. But it's now been confirmed to me by multiple sources that Axelrod is Stratton. The book says Stratton first went to Skinwalker Ranch in 2009, and while there, he became possessed, or infected, with a poltergeist, and that it followed him home and tormented his family. The following is a partial list of what Stratton reportedly encountered. A huge wolf-like creature, screaming black shadowy humanoids, nightmarish dogmen, dark humanoid creatures. Even after OSAP was shut down in 2012, Stratton continued his pursuit of the paranormal, utilizing his position at the Pentagon to move the needle. It's reported that Stratton used his clout to create an official UFO task force within the Pentagon. He would then become the director of this task force. And that brings us back to Stratton's 2019 meeting with Travis Taylor. At the meeting, Stratton says he had a copy of one of Taylor's books, had read it, and was very impressed. It was a book about how to defend Earth from a possible alien invasion. It was in this meeting, again a briefing about Skinwalker Ranch, that Stratton asked Taylor if he wanted to join his UFO task force at the Pentagon. Taylor says he responded, Hell yes. For the next two to three years, Travis Taylor would secretly work with Jay Stratton at the Pentagon hunting UFOs and the paranormal, while also starring in entertainment shows on the History Channel about UFOs and the paranormal. I say secretly because Brandon Fugel and the rest of the Skinwalker crew say they had no idea Taylor was doing this. In June 2022, after retiring from the Pentagon, Taylor finally went public with his secret. The Skinwalker crew was shocked. So it was a, it was a bit of a, a shock. In a video on the official Skinwalker Ranch website, Skinwalker Chief Security Officer Brian Arnold addresses this directly with Taylor. It, it's hard to kind of wrap my head around to find out that, you know, you had kind of were wearing two hats. Taylor states he couldn't tell them about his secret Pentagon position because he swore an oath not to. I signed uh, an oath, I swore an oath actually, to protect that information, so I couldn't do anything about it. But he tells the crew that he used his Pentagon position to protect them and the ranch from men in black. I was giving you guys back cover. Jay uh, Stratton told me was that if we find anybody doing anything illegal, if we find these men in black, uh, that we're taking them down. In UFO folklore, men in black are mythical government agents that work to suppress the truth about aliens and other things. Often, these men in black themselves are paranormal, appearing out of nowhere with strange, sometimes ghostly faces. However, beyond stories, there is no evidence that they even exist. It should be noted that Travis Taylor has publicly said that he thinks I, Stephen Greenstreet, just might be working for these nefarious men in black. Man, it sure does seem like some of these guys, uh, like Greenstreet for example, have, have a motivation. A shadow group behind the curtain that's driving this, paying this, funding this. That maybe these men in black are paying me to debunk things like Skinwalker Ranch. If we find you know, some shadow organization or some men in black or whatever, then they're breaking the law. Yeah, absolutely. And we need to find them and bring them to justice. This is, of course, not true and is utterly ridiculous. I was told by someone who previously spent years on the ranch to walk to the West Gate that borders the Native American reservation and to pay attention to how I felt once I got there. They told me every time they did this, that they felt and experienced something strange and sometimes frightening. Arriving at the gate, 
I felt fear for the first time of the night. Now that I've finished, I've walked to the end of the line, literally, I can feel in my brain uh, that spooky, a little bit of the spooky feeling. I'm starting to feel it a little bit. For some reason, I feel like I have to say I harbor no ill emotion or intentions. And then my lightning strike detector went off. My lightning strike detector just went off. It just beeped and it said relocate. That means right where I am is some kind of electrical thing. And then my eyes started to burn. God, jeez, hi. My face started to burn. <sighs> what the f I went back to my campsite and poured water on my eyes and face to no avail. God damn it, it's hurting my eyes. Look at my eyes. Especially this one. Look how swollen it is. What the hell was happening to me? Brandon Fugel claims Skinwalker Ranch is the biggest scientific endeavor of our time. Little old me, Brandon Fugel, in the commercial real estate sector, is running arguably the most aggressive science discovery program. But when it came time to define Skinwalker Ranch in legal documents, the word science was nowhere to be found. Fugel trademarked Skinwalker Ranch as a place of entertainment for the purpose of producing multimedia, movies, and TV shows. Uh, a location for entertainment, motion picture, television exploitation. Sure. The word science doesn't appear. Oh. Why? Uh, my initial efforts to trademark Skinwalker and Skinwalker Ranch was to control the integrity and to preserve the integrity of what we're doing. Fugel says he trademarked Skinwalker for purposes of entertainment to prevent others from using the Skinwalker name on various books, movies, and websites, which is something that's happened many times in the past. I don't know that you can trademark scientific research. But uh, you could trademark a scientific company. You could sure. trademark a, a scientific endeavor, yeah, but a scientific you don't team, trademark a scientific brand. Oh, well, I don't think Apple or SpaceX has filed a trademark for, uh, I may be wrong. Yeah, I'd be surprised to learn that SpaceX as a brand, trademark themselves as a entertainment, television, motion picture, exploitation group. A trademark for SpaceX says its goods and services are aerospace vehicles, namely launch vehicles and rockets. Another SpaceX document states, in part, that its primary class is scientific and technological services and research. At what point, Brandon, does Skinwalker Ranch rise above being a book for sale on Amazon, or being oh, a reality show on History Channel. It already has. Game over, Stephen Greenstreet. Yeah. Skinwalker Ranch has transcended books, media. We've proven that there is a legitimate scientific investigation and discovery. Fugel may claim to have legitimate scientific discoveries, but he has yet to properly present that. Have you had submitted for peer review, scientific peer review? Not yet. Instead, he and his crew attend science fiction entertainment conventions like AlienCon, Phenomicon, and FanX. Fans buy tickets to attend, and some of these tickets are quite pricey. The pricier tickets often include VIP access, autographs, and selfies. In other words, entertainment and some Utah government officials are spending taxpayer money to invest in Skinwalker Ranch, hoping to drive up local tourism. An investigation by Erica Lukes and Jack Brewer at Expanding Frontiers Research, an independent nonprofit, revealed financial documents showing Uinta County officials worked with Skinwalker Ranch crew members to create Phenomicon, 
a convention where fans pay money to meet paranormal celebrities like the Skinwalker Ranch crew members. Documents also show county officials paid Skinwalker crew members tens of thousands of dollars for their appearances and involvement. Travis Taylor, for example, was paid a little over $10,000 for his participation. Now, of course, city, county, and state governments hyping up a local supposed paranormal location to generate tourism is nothing new. Just look at the city of Roswell, New Mexico, the location of probably the most famous UFO case in history. Roswell is a kind of alien mecca. The city's welcome sign has a flying saucer on it. And I'm sure annual profits from tourism have become both expected and essential to the city's income. But there is a big difference between Skinwalker Ranch and a place like Roswell. Roswell doesn't claim visiting its city could possibly kill you. As we previously reported, the most shocking Skinwalker claim is that an evil poltergeist, which they call the Hitchhiker, can infect you, attach itself to you and then infect other people around you. In James Lekatsky's book about his Skinwalker investigations, he refers to this poltergeist as an infectious agent, a contagion, and compares it to COVID-19. I asked Fugel if he agreed with Lekatsky's claims about a contagious hitchhiker. Hitchhikers, an evil presence that attaches itself to people and spreads like a contagion. Yes. The hitchhiker phenomena, according to you, is real. We have data demonstrating that there is validity to those claims. Illnesses and injuries have occurred at your ranch. Absolutely. Jay Stratton claims he became infected with the hitchhiker in 2009 and that his family suffered many health effects. Travis Taylor at Phenomicon, again, an event sponsored and promoted by Utah government officials, says Jay Stratton infected his neighbor and that this infection gave her cancer. Taylor then shockingly claims that Robert Bigelow, former owner of Skinwalker Ranch, sold the ranch in 2016 because the ranch killed his wife. This claim is even more bizarre because Bigelow's wife died in 2020, four years after Bigelow sold the ranch. Before I could visit Skinwalker Ranch, I had to sign a waiver that acknowledged that the paranormal might hurt me, injure me, or even kill me. These are very serious claims, and Fugel and his crew claim to be very serious about them. We do take it seriously. We have brought in leading healthcare professionals. Have you ever contacted the CDC? No, we've just referred anyone to medical professionals. We've had medical attention immediately given to those who have experienced you know, sure. some of these I things. I can understand, you know, someone trips and falls, a unique experience causes a unique injury. Sure. But when there is a list, and you're very public about this on right. Twitter, um, you know, it, you're very public that there is an ongoing, consistent, right, physical threat to the human body and to human beings. Sure. Why haven't you called the CDC? Well, uh, because I don't know that the CDC is capable of assessing or even commenting on the nature of what we are dealing with out there. Have you ever contacted the National Institute of Health, the National Institute of Sciences? No. Offered to brief them? No. If it was me, and there was a, especially a place that I owned, and it was a location, and I was inviting people in, and some of those people got hospitalized, ongoing, at some point, I'm gonna go, okay, I gotta call in the big guns here. And, and also- I don't really trust the big guns. Okay. I mean, here's the thing. Okay, so you don't trust Show the me. government. You don't well, trust- Well, I don't trust any. Any authority is just as flawed. Speaking of flawed, what do these people who claim to have been potentially exposed to a deadly pathogen do? They go on a national tour. And meet hundreds of people. Infectious disease. Step right up, get your $20 selfies. Contagion. Get your tickets now. COVID-19. Hell yeah, I'll sign your alien mannequin. Children suffering. 
So much fun. Death. But wait, there's more. Fugle claims the ranch can possibly injure or kill you at any moment, and then he flies out celebrities for a tour of the ranch. Like Trent Reznor, Post Malone, and Darth Vader. Who wouldn't want to bring Darth Vader to Skinwalker Ranch? I also invited Darth Sidious, Ian McDiarmid, but he chickened out. We do take it seriously. I can't emphasize enough how much this makes no sense. There is a complete lack of logic here. <sighs> but it gets worse. Hey, gentlemen, I'd like you to meet Attorney General of the state of Utah, Sean Reyes. The Utah State Attorney General, Sean Reyes, appears on the Skinwalker TV show a couple of times. Fugel says Reyes has been briefed for years about the events at Skinwalker Ranch. Brandon's been keeping me updated. Reyes says he speaks on behalf of the citizens of Utah. On behalf of the citizens of the state of Utah. And that Skinwalker Ranch is an important issue for the state. These are important issues for uh, our state. Beyond his appearances on the show, Reyes attends science fiction conventions, sitting next to Fugel in the Skinwalker crew. I sent Reyes multiple questions about all of this to no response. Why? I emailed the governor of Utah asking if Skinwalker, per his attorney general, is in fact an important issue for the state. And if so, what's being done to keep people safe? The governor's office declined to comment. Why? United States Senator Mike Lee went to Skinwalker Ranch with his staff and was given a briefing by Fugel Fugel says Lee and his staff signed the same health waiver I did. Senator Lee's office did not respond to multiple requests for comment. Why? Why are state and federal officials seemingly endorsing and validating, in part, claims of a deadly contagion that harms human beings, while at the same time apparently doing nothing about it, beyond appearing on a reality TV show and attending sci-fi conventions. These are questions that demand answers. I got inside my tent, hoping sleep might alleviate my burning eyes. I woke up the next morning with my eye still swollen. At this point, I was convinced it was simply my allergies to weeds and grass. The last time my eyes swelled like this was 20 years ago, while I was living in Utah. I go back to Skinwalker headquarters, and after a brief chat with Eric Bard and Thomas Winterton, I left Skinwalker Ranch. I stopped at a gas station and bought some allergy medicine. And within a few hours, I was fine. Spending 24 hours at Skinwalker Ranch did not convince me of its paranormal claims. The books don't convince me. And a reality show on the History Channel doesn't either. But the show does, however briefly, reveal pieces of data. Data that the Skinwalker investigators claim proves something spooky is going on. All of this new data that we have tells us there are some really weird anomalies. So I thought this raw data might convince me. But it's not publicly available. I tried to find some of this data on the Skinwalker Ranch website, which you have to pay money for, because it says if you pay the money, they'll give you documentation of current research. So I broke out my MasterCard and signed up, but it was mostly just more of the same. Some weird photos, some weird videos, and more spooky stories. There was no raw data. So I emailed Brandon and asked if he could send me the best raw data he has regarding the paranormal on the ranch. Specifically, I wanted to see the raw data pointing to a wormhole existing above the ranch. 
The wormhole theory comes from an episode where they launch a balloon and then lose the balloon and then launch some rockets and then something happens to the rockets. And so Travis Taylor suggests... What if the only way to explain all these things is with a wormhole? He suggests that maybe the balloon and the rockets went inside a wormhole. By the way, how did he already have that drawn on the chalkboard? It just looks like it took some time to do, and then it's just suddenly there. Did he maybe do it a long time ago and was just waiting for a wormhole discussion? Anyways, I asked Fugel if he could send me the best raw data he has, and he said he would. He just needed some time. So I waited, and waited, and waited. After two months, I told him that I couldn't wait anymore. I had to finish this episode, so I gave him a hard deadline. Finally, four days after the deadline, he sent me the top evidences of Skinwalker Ranch. Multiple paragraphs. Words. Describing spooky things. For visual aids, he included clips from the History Channel show. That's it. That's all. So if this is the best that they have, then they have a whole lot of nothing. And maybe that's the real secret of Skinwalker Ranch. Game over, Stephen Greenstreet. <laughs>